Hello, my name is Dr. Pankaj Parasha and I'm the mentor for today. I'm a medical doctor, I've done my MBBS and for my interest in medical technology, I have uh, got my admission into the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi as a PhD candidate in the Center for Biomedical Engineering. I'm doing my PhD, I'm in the last phase of my studies and along with all these things i'm also a serial innovator and an entrepreneur i have developed a few medical devices and all these products which we are working on are being developed by a medtech startup company founded by me uh, with the name of cutting edge medical devices private limited it's a startup company that was incorporated in 2014 november of 2014 and was incubated uh, with the prestigious Indian Institute of Technology Delhi incubator that was managed by FITT, that is Foundation for Innovation and Technology Transfer. This venture has been running continuously since then and has now been able to see this uh, <clears throat> taste of success. We have recently launched the product in the market the product that we are developing is a portable, affordable, yet accurate point of care diagnostic device for early detection of kidney diseases and uh, in patients with uh, diabetes and high blood pressure and also detect high risk pregnancies. And all those could be done with a simple urine test. Today, I'm going to talk about the aspects of designing for a product that is a hardware product for a hardware startup company. I would like to share my experiences giving the design thinking process a startup's perspective so that you all can understand what are the parameters that are to be taken care of during a product development. Basically, the product that we mean here are tangible products, but this can also imply to all the non-tangible products like softwares, applications, and service models. So let's start with this. The topic that I've chosen today is titled Product Design and Engineering for Developing a Product with and a Startup's Perspective. Now let's start the process. So a product is a very important aspect for the entrepreneurship because it's the, the world wants something to buy or needs something to use. And this is what a product is. So for an every entrepreneurship, a product is important. So now let's back, go back to the starting point. What is entrepreneurship? The word entrepreneur comes from the French word entreprendre, which means to undertake. It means to start a business. And an entrepreneur, as defined by the Moriam Webster Dictionary, is a person who organizes, manages, and assumes the risks of business or enterprises. And when the businesses are built around a technology, it's called as technopreneurship. When you talk about the word entrepreneur and entrepreneurship, it's a buzzword today. Everyone wants to be a startup founder. So that's what has been concluded. Most of the people want to be an entrepreneur and that's a dream for them. And for many, it's a desire. And but for a very few elite, it's an aim because entrepreneurship is just not a child's play. It takes a lot of efforts, painless, um, I should not call it painless, uh, sleepless nights, unending efforts, 
unfathomable rejections and that's all what comes with an entrepreneurship so <clears throat> when the word entrepreneur comes to your mind these are some of the famous entrepreneurs that we aspire to be starting from thomas alva edison to steve jobs to donald trump to elon musk zuckerberg our own mr sachin bansal mr vijay shekhar sharma mr dhirubhai ambani and all these people are the brightest stars of the entrepreneurship world actually what i have experienced and it's not wrong to say entrepreneurship is a roller coaster ride where you can get on the uh, roller coaster but getting off of this is not an easy task a moment you are at the highest of your spirits and at the very next moment you are falling freely into the abysmal depths of sorrow grief rejection and still you have to keep on uh, going on without complaining because this is a journey that you have yourself taken up so now come to the product uh, we are talking about the pro uh, what is a product so what do you see here this is a smartphone from apple it's the latest one from apple what do you see here it's a beautiful headphone and what do you see here a nice designed pair of shoes footwear that are designed to keep your feet cool and aerated and what do you see here it's the beautiful lamborghini centenario uh, it is one of the most advanced cars being offered from lamborghini so what are all these from phone to headphones to shoes to the scarf all of these products are basically products so what is a product the product is an article that is manufactured or refined for sale what does the word manufactured or refined mean this is not a pro uh, this is not a thing that is to be kept by the uh, by the maker it's not a piece of art that is meant only to be kept if i am the painter if i am the artist i'll keep it for my own but once it goes for the use of the people where others are going to buy it then it becomes a product the car is a product because it's meant to be sell, sold the shoes the phones the headphones all are meant to be sold and there is a and there is a gradual and continuous improvement and refinement so that the company that offers those products stays ahead not only products there are persons or also that uh, that is the result of an action or process like for example i call myself as a product of mgm medical college or i am also the product of uh, indian institute of technology delhi so all these things make me a product of these institutes i am not for sale but these institutes have put in a lot of efforts to make me into a human resource that is worth something these are the tangible products that we have talk, talked about i'll just mention briefly about intangible products like banks also have products like a home loan it's a product a vehicle loan that's a product a insurance policy that is a product so all these things which have been thought meticulously and improved and refined and being offered to customers is also called as a product like for example gmail is a product from alphabet company google a search engine is again a product of alphabet company iphone is a product from apple corporate incorporation ipad is a product from apple incorporation so these are tangible and examples of intangible products given together so that is what is a product 
I'll just give you an example why when we need to say that ready for sale. These are two product, uh, two images of a, of a different stages of a product development. One is a prototype of Centiglo where you see three boxes handmade like cardboards and uh, sunboards. And the other one is a beautiful looking uh, device that is ready with all the features in it. So which one would you pay to buy? The one, this one, the Centiglo or the Centiglo prototype. So obviously Centiglo is a product and this is not a product phase, rather it's a more of a prototype. So it's not a product, it's in the phase of development. So what is, a, what is peculiar of a product? It's tangible or intangible, that's what we have discussed. There are serious intentional efforts that are put into that. These efforts have, cons uh, have considerable effect on the outcome of the product. Most of the products are designed in such a way so that they are easy to use, more friendly, useful, and either save uh, efforts, money, time, or anything for the end user. Products are outcomes of sustained continuous events of iteration in an item or service being offered. From iPhone initial models that iPhone had launched to this iPhone 11 Pro, there has been a series of improvement which kept on going and going with the time and made the product more and more utilitarian and useful for the people. Not only this, the softwares, if we talk about the Android version, today we have initially started way back with Android, uh, what should I call it, what was the initial one? Uh, cupcake. That was the initial offerings and now we have crossed uh, Pi and I think so that has been a continuous improvement in the product from an initial offering to the present offering and most of the times the product also becomes the face of the company. If we talk about an example of this Google. Google is not name of the company. The name of the parent company is Alphabet Incorporation, whereas Google as a search engine is a product of that company. Gmail is a product of that company. Google Hangouts is a product of the company. Google Pay is a product of the company. But the product is so prominent that it has become the face of the company. The other example could be the previous example we saw of the car, Lamborghini. The Lamborghini has become the face of the uh, company itself. We talk about Apple iPhones. iPhone is also now very close to being the face of the company. Though it has other products, but iPhone is the best selling product of the company. Then what is a design? The design is what decides upon the look and functioning of a building, garment, or a product by making detailed drawings of that. How do we understand that? When a house or a building is being made, it is always first designed on papers by architects. They draw pictures and images of the design of the building, how it would be looking, what would be the measurements and how it would be uh, constructed and once that goes ahead after the designs are finalized then sometimes the builders that you have seen go on with a prototype model of that made up of cardboards that is what is prototyping initially in that so that the customers can understand how the product would be looking when it gets ready then a plan of drawing produced to show the look and function of the working of the building garment and object before it is made 
so once the plan has been made a model has been made and then that's what it looks like after that sometimes real prototypes are also required like if we talk again the construction industry real flats and houses are built by the builders to let the customers have a feel of the real product that they would be buying or interested to buy just take an example here a mouse a computer mouse is being designed so this is how it's uh, the first design would look like this is the image that i've taken from internet uh, and the other one is an image that how a kettle a tea kettle a hot water kettle would look like when it would be made so this is the first design of that so first thing iteration comes at a sketch level this is the first step of designing now when we go ahead for a product designing uh, this is going to be a little bit more of a theoretical part before we take the real examples but we need to understand aspects of design i'm not going into the very much details of a th total theoretical details as a practical person who is going to implement all these things you should know certain basics about design you need not to be an expert in design but you should understand the basics of the design so this is what we are trying to uh, show here so what are the aspects of design first one is interaction design the interaction design means how the product is going to react with the user or vice versa how the user is going to react with the product and interact with the product what are the different contexts it would be dealing with how the buttons would be placed for example this is a mouse that i have it has two switches one two keys left and the right click keys and then there is a roller in that so the product has been designed in such a way that it fits properly in my hands or any user's hand it should be comfortable so this is an interaction design where how a user would be interacting with the product when it's being used if the mouse is too small and if then i would not be able to hold it properly and if the mouse is too large then again it would be a problem for me to hold, hold it but the size of the device should be such that if a person with a medium size and average size hand uses it should be able to use it comfortably maybe a person with large hands or a person with a smaller hands could use and then still be able to work with that so this is a design aspect which you have to see how the user is going to interact with the design part then comes the information architecture the information architecture is a model or concept of various data elements organized to solve a task for example if i ask someone how do i text you on whatsapp so the flow of the process how i would be explained is first you will have to open up the app on on the smartphone then select then go and search the name of the person from your phone book uh, by searching on the search option in the app find the name click it so that the chat box opens and then you can text the person and then press enter to send the message so this is a workflow or if i have to ask someone to go from point a to point b stopping at point c then all the processes that the person was required to do would be told in details to that person so for for example you have to start from a walk for a straight kilometer and then on your left hand side you will point you will find point c where you just have to wait for a minute talk to the person at the <clears throat> reception hand over the prod, uh, the bag and then walk ahead to point b so all these steps have to be in a sequential manner you have to understand the prof, proper chronology of the steps that are to be followed so that there is no error in executing the task 
whether anyone performs that task. So this is the aspect of information architecture. Then visual design. Visual design means the look and feel of the product. That's how it looks like. Say, let's come back to this mouse. The mouse is smooth at some areas, whereas some areas where the click buttons are is anti-skid. The surface is such made, is so made that it does not skid. The fingers, even being sweaty, do not skid from the surface and give a proper grip to the holder. And along with that, it should be visually appealing. Nowadays, you can see that many products are designed in totally different ways in which they were not even thought of. The phones which have totally changed. 10 years back, there were, uh, there were keypad phones where uh, the people had to use touch button, uh, not the touch buttons, the keypads to enter their numbers and uh, any inputs that they had to put in. Later, when the touch phones were introduced initially by Apple, and then the technology changed rapidly and getting from the, the keypad phones to what we have is a design and a visual design aspect. And that has totally changed the look and feel of the phone. The usability testing. The next point is very important because this is where you get the first feedback of the product being developed and how it is going to function. It's a closed door event where, say for example, we have developed this mice, uh, sorry, mouse. So we have to test rigorously whether it works well or not. Because if there are flaws in the design, we as the first designing company should be able to rectify them, thinking us to be representing a huge mass of the population. Because this product once gets into the market, its failure and success depends upon all these aspects that we have discussed. So this is a very important aspect that we need to discuss and we need to stress upon. As many as uh, usability testings could be done, that is great. Uh, some of the testings could be done on design aspects itself when it's on a... Um, it's a drawing board on a drawing board of a, of a say for example any sketches are there the some of the aspects could be clear then and there then even <clears throat> the teams and the all the stakeholders samples populations of the stakeholders could be held there and ask them to refine the information architecture feed, uh, feedbacks on them visual design how does it look how would you feel that it goes into the pro market would look like and then again a multiple testing so this product design aspect uh, require a lot of background work which creates a lot of impact on the final product that is being developed so these are very important aspects <clears throat> nowadays there is a term called as design thinking there are three aspects me the human being form the design and shape of the object function what function it's going to do again come back to the mouse this is the form of the mouse its function is to act as a pointer device to my computer then how i behave with this and how it behaves with with me as a human is our interaction probably you might be knowing that previously few years ago around 10 years ago there were mouse with a solid metal ball covered by a rubber sheath below the surface of the mouse and which rolled and made the x and x y uh, and z axis pointing down at the x y axis pointing down on the screen but the problem was with that ball was it had to be cleaned regularly it had uh, it used to slip from various surfaces so and that was not a very convenient way of uh, pointing on the surface. So that was how the, there has been an incremental change from a, a iron ball or a heavy ball a mouse to this optical mouse where this has become very, very sensitive 
and very light in weight so all these aspects are there so when you talk about the interaction between form and function when if this has to be a mouse it has to be this shaped only it cannot be designed in a form of a phone or cannot be designed in a form of a watch it has to be like a device that could be held in the curvatures of your hand convex concave curvatures of your hand operated by fingers so this has to be some shape so this is what is called as the industrial design the industrial design determines the shape and functions of the device then when how the device and me as a user are going to interact that is be, that would be decided by design thinking this aspect includes how the product would be behaving with the human and how the human would be behaving the world has moved from a ball mouse to this optical mouse because there was some problems that design thinking aspects found it and thought it needs to be rectified so that is when function and human interaction will intermingle and create an opportunity for design thinking design thinking is a very important aspect because nowadays we are talking of connected med uh, connected devices connected medical devices then smart devices and everything are requiring the connection with a human being and therefore this has to have a aspect of design thinking again let's think about an atm machine how you are going to interact with that machine that is where design thinking is required a smart television how you are going to interact with that smart television is going to be are the governed by design thinking so these aspects are important for design thinking then when human interacts with form of the device like always i would hold it this way automatically it gives a communication that this device has to be held in your hands not this way not this way always this way that is what a design communication is or communication design is so importance of the design why designing is important we'll discuss about all these aspects with examples because without examples i think that uh, things are better understood with examples so let's talk about the first exam uh, first point aspect that is utility a product if being developed has to have a utility and the two examples here <clears throat> are examples of a automobile that runs on a single wheel the this above uh, picture shows a mono wheel driven motorbike but not a bike it's a mono uh, what should i call it is a motorcycle driven by a machine the other one is a large wheel in which the man himself sits and there's a huge engine in front of him and this is to be driven so does it have a utility as a product would anyone invest on this for a day to day commute i would say no yeah it is good to show off for a or a somewhere where you have to show your peculiar products or peculiar uh, taste but it is not a good product for a day to day commute so this product is not qualified as a product because the design lacks utility so the utility aspect of the design has to be taken care second aspect is peculiarity so what do you see here what you see here is a, a stapler pin remover so this device is a stationary device uh, used for removing stapler pins out of your stacked and stapled paper sheets this is a generic product if i was a manufacturer of this product how would i ensure that my product is only sold because it's a generic product it has no peculiar uh, no peculiarity into that 
So how do I add peculiarity to my product? Design it differently. What do you see here? It's the same product, the same pin remover, but if we have these two options in the shelf, which one do you think would be bought? Even this crocodile head shaped pin remover may be costing much higher, but it has chances of being sold more because it has a distinguishing peculiarity. And this distinguishing feature ensures that the product is sold above its competition. So that is what is design adds to the product. Ergonomy, I'm sorry, yeah. So <clears throat> what you see here are traditional keyboards and with the keyboards, there is anatomical uh, uh, strain on the wrists because the wrists are to be uh, laterally rotate, uh, 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 shift are to be tilted and then used on the keyboard because this creates problems and long usage may cause wrist pain. So to solve this, the design aspect could be the product is redesigned into a split spread out keyboard, which is now more comfortable, does not create strain on the wrists and reduces the efforts of typing. So this design change is called as ergonomy. So this design is called as ergonomic. Now comes safety. Safety for every product is very important because it is going to play with the lives. It's going to be handled independently by people who are not as trained as the designers or developers of the product because they do not have all the information associated with, that, with the product. So safety is a very important aspect. People, what you see here is a balcony with uh, so many potted plants kept in on the sill of the balcony. So what problem it poses in multi-story buildings is these pots may fall down and when they fall from a height, they may cause severe damage to the property like automobile, like cars, or may even be fatal for person if it falls on their head. So this is a design change, a split pot that could be easily placed on the, the tip or on the edge of the balcony uh, parapet and still stay safe. So this is a design innovation ensuring safety in the product. Now unique selling proposition. What you see here is a, a, a motorcycle, fairly stable, safe, good looking and practical and has a great utility. But on today's design aspects, if we compare this motorcycle with this one, which one would you like to buy? Most of the people would say the motorcycle in the down right corner of the screen because it looks beautiful, is more aggressively designed. And if both the bikes have similar performance, even then the unique selling proposition or the in short is also called as the USP is the design of the motorbike. Here, the product, the designed motorbike, the sporty looking motorbike would be oversold in comparison to that top left corner motorbike. Though even if they have same features, because in today's trends, the right bottom motorbike is more in trend than the above motorbike. So this is what makes a unique selling proposition. If we talk about that uh, stapler pin remover, that uh, crocodile head design was its uh, unique selling proposition. So that is what it decides. Then it should align with the company Moto. These are two comp products. Both are cars, both are red in color, both have four wheels. 
both have two seats but if today if we see which comp uh, one is a premier car what is the above left is a premier car premier uh, com ca car from a premier company that used to run in 1960s and 70s and was discontinued later and this one is a ferrari so the company's motto for ferrari is built for speed and great looks so you can easily determine any uh, one would say which car would go faster even by seeing the design anyone would say that the ferrari in the top uh, in the bottom right corner would is a car designed for speed and that is what is the company's motto so that is how design also uh, uh, determines the company's motto with that so these are some of the aspects of design now come to steps of engineering a product through a through designing so steps of engineering a product through design that means if you have to develop a product what are the steps that have to be followed first is ideation the first step is always that you have to create an idea and the sketches are made so that it looks it can give a first look of how the product would look like then design proposal design proposal includes all the items that are uh, listed in that like uh, how the product would look like what the product would be made up of what would be the specifications what are the uh, requirements of the product and all these things would be taken into account and made into a proposal that would be included in a design proposal then <clears throat> feasibility analysis if i had to make a, for example come back to the uh, mouse <clears throat> if i have to design this mouse it has to be sturdy it has to be long lasting so would i use a uh, uh, make it of thin glass would i use a thin glass in making a mouse probably no or never because this is a device that has to be handled and has to be low in cost so if it is made up of glass it would keep on breaking and that broken glass could even hurt the user so this is where you have to do a feasibility analysis phones for example are coming up with large batteries for longer run times but still there is a limit to that reason being if there is no limit very large batteries may pose a danger to the end user in form of fire or explosions so for example if someone is using there were explosions with some brand of phones which were <clears throat> prohibited in airplanes so what if those batteries were even larger and enormous that would have created havoc so that is why always feasibility analysis has to be followed then prototypes prototypes are made so that they could be have a, a real feel of the product could be uh, experienced in first hand this could be made by prototyping with cardboards papers wood clay now even 3d printing of with plastics and various substances are available so these are the uh, the prototype materials then comes feedback you have to have a feedback on the product that what you have developed the prototype is a very good example of how your product would be looking so ask your stakeholders whether this product would be going well with the uh, the design idea and the design proposal of that this is very important aspect and those feedbacks are to be taken on a positive note never to be taken on a negative note and try to make those changes in the design which are feasible based on the feedback then once all those things are uh, included you can finalize the product and then the design roadmap could be followed a uh, just a small bit about rapid prototyping because this is a new field 3d printing <clears throat> is a aspect where rapidly prototyping could be done for example uh see 
I wanted to make a skull of a dinosaur. So this is a CAD design. So what we do is after sketching, we can make that sketch into a CAD design, computer edit designing. And this CAD design of the skull of a T-Rex could be made. And this when transferred to a 3D printer can make a plastic uh, skull mold, uh, not a mold, a skull that could be held in hand. This is what the importance of 3D printing is. So 3D printing is a technology in which plastic filament is molten and deposited in layers. That is in uh, one of the ways of uh, 3D printing that you see in the left right, uh, uh, top corner. And the bottom right corner, what you see is uh, optical method in which uh, resins are cured by uh, ultraviolet light and creates a design so that is guided by laser. And the above machine is what you see is a large 3D printer. A 3D doodling pen is also an option for 3D printing uh, for a very small doodling. It's just for a doodling purpose. It's not a solution to a 3D printer, but yeah, some things you can show it. So now let's take all these understandings based on what we have discussed here on a startup's perspective of product development. So I'll give you an example of what we have done, my journey, taking you through my journey. So the company Cutting Edge Medical Devices was incorporated on 18th of November 2014. And we were incubated in IIT Delhi incubator. We are registered as a DIPP startup company. The problem that we are solving is early detection of kidney diseases in patients with diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, heart diseases, pregnancy induced hypertension, and on many other conditions where microalbumin, that is albumin in urine is the first sign of kidney, a uh, first sign of kidney damage. And if it is detected, we can save huge number of patients from getting into chronic kidney diseases and pregnancy is getting into complicated preeclampsias and eclampsias. So for all these things, how it is managed today, we have uh, pathology labs performing the test on very co costly auto analyzers. That cost per test is also very high for the patients themselves. The cost of the test is around uh, 600 rupees to 700 rupees in the market for each test. So because of all these factors, since the test is only available in large labs, this test could not reach to the masses. And many people are leading, uh, reaching to chronic kidney disease stages. So taking all these things, we developed, me and my team developed a portable point of care diagnostic device, which we called it as Syntiglo. It is such a simple device that you just have to take 2 ml of urine in a disposable cuvette put our reagent, mix it, put it in the device and just put your patient ID. And in just two seconds, the device gives the results. This is one of the fastest, most accurate, non dipstick based, portable, smart point of care diagnostic device for estimating proteins in urine. It has gone through a lot of val validations across the country from various reputed institutions. So the journey started from a very, uh, the, this is the last process. This is the last step of a product development cycle when it became a product before that it started from a scratch from designs that how the process would be done, the process flow and everything. So, uh, these are some of the aspects of the test that's more than 95% accurate. It takes just two to three seconds and all these things. It's a non, so we have talked about this. This could be used for uh, at home monitoring by patients, clinics, doctors, clinics, primary health centers, then uh, hospital beds called, could be using it. And it's a global unmet need that we are solving. So all this started with a cardboard box prototype. This was more of a proof of concept where I wanted to see whether the function, the, the uh, proposal that I'm sub, uh, thinking of works or not. So this is what I used. It's a cardboard box. Uh, it was, I think a sweets box and a medicine box that I used to make a prototype with. And this was the first proof of concept. And as you can see, it was made on 4th of January of 2013. That's when I made the first prototype. Then that is not a product. No one would buy this. 
then came the journey of the product development i <clears throat> got some like minded people to join my team and then how, that's how the team was uh, found, uh, team was built and we started developing these are the initial versions of the prototype this had now complex electronics with uh, uh, custom boards then this was the third version where it had more of a display and more of a better prototype more accuracy and the data transfer capabilities and all those things this was a still advanced version where it had even more of a patient inputs were added into that this was the fourth version then this was our uh, next version where the product was uh, it could be called as a pre prod a final product where it was more of a good looking uh, almost a penultimate product still this was one version without the printer and this was version was with a thermal printer where the patients could get their test results instantaneously on a thermal printer here and here only you could get on the smartphone then after this still when we were uh, then this was the hardware which we finalized and this worked upon with all these uh, features but there were many inputs that we got from our uh, end users and from of our friends critics and uh, mentors that this product does not look like a finished product it looks like a point of sale machine or a card swipe machine which you find at shopping centers shopping malls and the shops so if it's a medical device it should look something better me and my team agreed upon that yes this is true this product does not match to the level of accuracy cost benefit and uh, utility that we have reached so we got back to the drawing board again started sketching making designs and this is the final version of the product that we offer we name it as centiglo there are two versions white and gray it has a touch screen instead of a previously it had a keypad now it has a touch screen 3 and 1/2 inch touch multicolor touch screen instead of a monochrome uh, touch uh, keypad based small 16 cross 2 screen then this also has a beautiful looking design more on utility stability and usability and the the important aspect here is two color options the customers have two color options white has looks great but for field uses it may get dirty very soon so we have designed a darker color option because some people may like a darker color option for the product this is where this come this product could come into use so this is what we have designed this is a feedback and how feedbacks and uh, all the aspects of designing utility safety then uh, usp peculiarity and face of the pro, uh, face of the motto of the company this is how you take into aspect uh, these aspects into mind then how you are designing the product then one more aspect here is we have reduced the human we have put in design thinking here so that the product interaction with the human and the human's interaction with the product are eased off even a small child can do a test on that the reason being giving an example of child is that even an untrained or a very less trained healthcare worker in the remotest of the villages can perform a test on this device this is the basic purpose of design thinking in developing of a product then this product has uh, won many awards since 2016 we have been continuously winning awards from the former chief minister of mp then we had uh, dr kiran majumdar shaw giving us the award for the pitch fest in uh, startup bio 2017 this was the same year when i got introduced to aicte also through the national startup summit organized in the india international science fair in october 2017 in chennai in association with uh, anna university iit madras and national institute of ocean technology so that's how i got into touch with uh, aict team and uh, i also won the pulse the venture it was a first reality show on tv based on uh, com 
competition for startups and i was the national winner for that first season then the royal academy of engineering has also awarded us a project at various level and i'm the i'm very happy to inform you all that this year i'm the first i'm the only company from india that has been selected for the leaders in innovation fellowship advanced program by royal academy of engineering london so there are uh, 18 participants from all over the world from e one from each country and then they are being mentored by royal academy of engineering so we launched the product on 22nd of november 2019 at the global bio india 2019 event we have uh, the honorable secretary of department of biotechnology uh, dr renu swaroop madam then uh, the head of uh, investments at Biorag, Dr. Manish Divan, head of uh, uh, diagnostics and all, Dr. Sharma, and then people from uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, WHO, UNICEF, all are there during the product launch. So uh, my ex my association with AICT has been since 2017. Uh, when i was a participant at uh, the india international science festival i won that uh, science festival startup summit and uh, since then i have been associated at various capacities guiding young star entrepreneurs startups uh, under uh, the the ages of uh, the india in council for uh, this aict i've been a part of various activities organized by them i've also been a part of uh, various mentorship programs that uh, aict keeps on organizing for the students across the country this webinar is also a part of that and this is my contact address and i would be very happy if you have some queries some questions i would be happy to answer them thank you very much stay at home stay safe jai hind thank you